How many of you have been in a situation, again, where you've learned information was valuable, you're excited about it, and you didn't follow through, and it wasn't because you weren't interested, it was because you were overwhelmed. Who's been there before? Raise your hand and say, I. I. We want to help you to change that. The way you change that is by learning one simple skill. It's a skill you already have, but you may not be using it to its maximum ability. And tonight, rather than teach you the whole skill, let's just point it out. And the skill is called chunking. Chunking is the understanding that when you're first learning something, that something feels like many things. Case in point, you're gonna to learn to drive a stick shift car and you're brand new at driving a car. Who can remember this experience? And was it overwhelming, yes or no? Why? Because driving a car today for most of you is one chunk of information. I'm gonna go drive, that's it. Because most of what you've done, you've got cognitive knowledge about, you repeated it enough with enough emotion, you did it enough in your body, now all of those complex things happen and what you call it is just driving. But the first time you were driving, it was a lot of different activities. I can remember, they called me speed racer because I couldn't figure out how to get anything going. I got in the car, you know, okay, accelerator, brake, got that, watch the road, and I'm supposed to do this too? And watch the rear view mirror? No, 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 they, this ain't happening, right? Because it was overwhelming. Because what it was, was one chunk of you was figuring out how to accelerate, one part of you break, another part of you's gotta watch the road, another one's watching the rear view mirror, another one's gotta figure out the timing of moving this in. But after a while, it just became driving. And most of you drive today, literally, on automatic pilot. Because many of you, how many have ever done this? You're driving along, and all of a sudden, your mind goes somewhere else, and all of a sudden you go, who's been driving? <laughs> who's had that experience before? Say, I. I. Well, who's been driving is your subconscious mind, the part of you that makes your heart beat 100,000 times a day without you having to think about it even when you're sleeping. And your subconscious absorbs way more when you're in a position of total absorption like you are here, immersion, more than your conscious mind does. But what will make you confident and help you is if you can design a few triggers or a few ways to take all this math stuff and break it into the way most people learn. Most people think one, two, three, many. They get past three chunks and they get a bit overwhelmed. So we have these seven tools that we're giving you, these seven pillars. The first one we spent the morning on was this concept of taking stock. And there are these five questions. That's the first pillar. Once that's in place, now we focus on the second one. Innovation and marketing, which we're going to touch on tomorrow and we touch a little bit on today. Then we go to the third one. It's strategies versus tactics. It's a bit of, you know, what is this education marketing? It's all the things you're starting to learn right now that can give you a huge competitive advantage. How many agree the content you just learned could give you a huge advantage? Implement it. How many would agree with that? Say I. I. When you can start to get a 10 times, 10x, 20x return for the same activity, your business changes overnight. And there's no reason why anybody here can't do it. And it doesn't matter what it is. But you do have to change your mindset. Your mindset can't be, well, you know, I want people to use my services to take care of their parents, but you haven't added the value by teaching me something I need to know about it. What happens at these hospitals or what happens in these locations to my parents if I'm not aware of it or if I'm not aware of my other choices are? You gotta engage me emotionally. It isn't just a mental tactic. It's really caring enough about your client to enter their world and have the feeling and compassion. And you don't just know this stuff, you feel this stuff. Here's chunking. Here's what's happening to many of you in life. This is your to-do list of life. Oh my God, I gotta do this, and 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 I gotta do this. Oh, and I learned that, and I gotta do this, 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 oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And what happens? Your brain goes, eek. You go into overwhelm. Because you have all these things, and the brain has a difficult time taking all these individual items. But what if you could come along and you could say, you know, this one, and 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 this one, these all relate to how I can increase the number of customers that I get from the same amount of activity. Okay, and what if this, and this, and this, and this, and this, relate to something else that's really important to me. Let's say these are all about how I recruit the right people. Oh yeah, and what if this and this and this and this and this, all this relates for me to how I can immediately make a shift. I mean immediately make a shift in the culture of my company so I'm not the only one driving it, other people are thinking of this. 
All of a sudden, I have three things I got to focus on instead of 33 things I got to function on. How many can handle these three have a lot better in your mind? Say I. So I'm always looking for chunking devices, ways to take the complex and at least chunk it. Even if I don't get it, at least I can put it in the right slots. I can go, okay, if I can remember the overall theme, then I can come back here and I can look at these individual things and figure out how to you know, implement them. So Jay Abraham's gonna be here tomorrow. Jay's been a friend of mine for years. And Jay and I were talking, I don't know, 18 years ago, 19, 20 years ago, I don't know how long ago, it was a long time ago. And I was interviewing him and I was saying most people in business, business is complex. That's why most people don't do it. And as the business becomes more successful, does it become more complex or less complex usually? Which one? More complex. But complexity can also be simplified if you learn to chunk things, if you learn to organize things. There's a lot of activity, for example, in sending an email, but today for most of us it's one chunk. It's been automated for us. Well, you can do the same thing with your business as it gets more complex. So I was saying to Jay, there's got to be a way. When we talk about all these tools for improving your business, I mean, really, there aren't that many ways to improve your business. If I wanted to improve my business and I said, look, a significant jump in most people's business would be 10 or 20%, but how many agree 33% big jump in your business? How many agree with that? Say I. How many love to have a 33% jump? Say I. I'm going to show you right now in less than 15 minutes how to do it. It's so damn simple. Because there aren't that many things you can do to grow that business. In fact, there's only three things. What if you could grow that business 250% in the same time period? Really, truly do it. How many of you in that? Say I. I. Great, then let's chunk it right now. If you're going to grow a business, if you're going to increase a business of any sort, if you're going to make a shift, I want to give you the equivalent of this for a moment. I'll hide this. You're not staring at it anymore. There's really only three things you do to grow a business. Think about it. The first thing you do to grow a business more than anything else is you got to get more what? Got more what? Clients. clients. Got to get more clients. Some of you used to call them customers. Many of you now think of clients. Again, as was noted earlier, customer, you might have a one-time relationship with a client. You're really trying to figure out how to meet their needs. You're looking out for them. You're trying to make sure that this is somebody you're protecting, you're caring for. If you get more clients and you're charging for your clients, are you going to increase the business? Yes or no? So that's one thing you can do, obvious. And by the way, you're going to learn a million different ways to get more clients, but that's one of those areas. What's the second thing you can do? There's only three things you can do. You can get more clients and you can get each time somebody buys to get them to buy what? More. That's the only other thing you can really do. Get more clients or get them to buy more. Make, make an investment. It can be more money, more, more price or a greater price per unit. If you increase the product quality, can you charge more? Yes or no? Or could you have multiple products like we described to you? So when you meet their needs and there's other needs, they start going, wow, I need that too. And it's a legitimate need. You're not just selling them. You truly are meeting their needs. Can you find a way, once you have a client, to meet more of their needs if you're innovating and if you love your clients, if you care about them, if you understand them, not mentally but emotionally, how many think you could find some other needs you could truly meet for them since you're an expert? How many could do this? Say I. So if you do that, you can charge more, right? The third choice, and the only third choice to grow a business, get more clients, get more money each transaction, or get them to buy more often. Those are the only three ways to grow any business. I don't care what business you're in. That's what's so beautiful about this. Get more clients, get more income per transaction with the client, and or get the client to buy more often. And here's how you're going to do that. Open your notebook, and I'll put it on the screen for you as well. And let's do a little math, real simple math. And we'll do it with a, a number that's small enough that no one needs to grab their calculator. Number one, out loud, so it's in your body. What's my first way to grow my business? Increase the number of? That's number one. Number two, increase the average what? More money per transaction. Or third, increase the what? Repurchase. Or some of you might get more referrals because some of you might say, but Tony, I sell real estate and a person doesn't buy again. You know, on average, they might not buy for four years, three years, five years. But the best realtors I know have an absolute formula where they want, for example, a 20% return on all their clients. They don't necessarily buy again. They either buy again within four years, five years, or they refer somebody who buys. Now, not everybody does that, but some people refer three people that buy. One of the guys I know makes several million bucks a year in real estate, has been doing this for about 20 years. Because he has a formula. He has an absolute glow. I want you tonight 
to leave with a formula for an absolute goal to grow your business by at least a third, and if you think you can do it without even being aggressive, 250%. Let's do the math. It's so damn simple. It's mind-boggling. So look right here. Let's take a number of customers. Let's say a business has, a small business, let's say it's a $200,000 little business to make it really, really simplistic. Some little startup, some little company just getting going. This might be me incorporated, one person or one or two people. But they want to do this. And they got a thousand customers. And those customers' average price of a sale each time they buy is how much? Come on, guys, how much? $100. And they repurchase usually an average of how many times over the course of that relationship? Twice. Twice in a year in this case. So that produces $200,000. So let's just do this. How many of you think that screwing up, if you took one little itty bitty tiny, you know, infinitesimal piece of these five days, you took one or two strategies, you could find a way to get 10% more clients. How many think you could do this? Let me see a show of hands. Anybody not think you could get 10%? If you don't now, that's okay. But the end of five days, if you don't, now we will have your head examined, right? You're going to have so many ways. You could apply one or two out of everything. Just apply one and you could do this. So you get 10% more clients. For this person, 10% more clients, fill in the blank. How much would that be? They got 1,000 clients, they get 10% more. How many is that? 1,100. So you're going to get 100 more to do it. And let's say that you're only going to increase the average price of the sale by 10%. So how much would they get per transaction now? $110. Jot it down. And let's say their average repurchase in a year is per, per customer is twice in a year. And we're going to increase the 10%. So how much is that? 2.2%. Now with these small numbers, it's real easy. We add those together and guess what we end up with? $266,000. Doesn't sound like a lot of money. Because most of you, a $200,000 business is ridiculous, but I'm doing this deliberately. That is a 33.1% increase in business. Here's the formula. Increase the number of clients by 10%. Increase the transaction value by 10%. Increase repurchase or referral by 10%. You just grew your business by a third. By the way, will your profit only be a third? How much of this is going to profit? Is it going to be the same as all your other purchases or all your other sales? Yes or no? No, because you're covering most of your overhead already in your core business. So your profitability, this goes to a great significant amount to your bottom line. Who here could find a way to get 10% more for your current product or service, even without much enhancement? How many think you could do it? I'm just curious. How many could do it definitely by an enhancement or by adding another service? Let me see a show of hands. You know you could. How many think if you worked on it and focused on really serving your customer, you're going to buy 10% more often, 2.2 times per customer? How many think you could do that? Great. One third business growth. I want you to get how simple this is. Now, if you wanted to get a little bit more aggressive, and most of you in this room certainly should, let's take the same little business, and let's say we're going to increase the number of clients, not 10%. If you can get a 10x or 20x return on your ads, if you start using education marketing as an element, you're using market data, and people start going, wow, of course I do business with you. You're not even selling them. You're just telling them the truth. You're adding value to their life. If you just took one or two or three of these strategies and you're just a little bit more aggressive, you hired some salespeople, you're in young adult, excuse me, you're in toddler, and you go hire some salespeople before you think you couldn't afford it, but now you go, you know what? I'm going to figure out what the value of this customer is, and I'm going to pay disproportionately for some of these people, or I'm going to do an educational strategy like we saw where I can give them more income. I'm going to hire some more salespeople. Or you're in that stage of young adulthood. And you say, you know what? We're going to get much more efficient. I'm not going to keep mailing to everything. I'm going to find a more efficient way to get my clients. Whatever it is. Let's say increase them by 33%. 33% would be 1,330 new clients. Let's say it took you a year to do that. And by the way, let's say we increase the value per sale by 25%. So now instead of 100, it'd be how much? Come on, guys, how much? 125. And let's say we increase the repurchasing frequency by 50%, 50% more. Which, by the way, if somebody loves you, they're not going to buy 2.2 times. They'll probably buy three times in a year if you're really adding the value. So that's three times. Now, when you put those numbers together, what do you end up with, by the way? You end up with a $500,000 business that used to be a $200,000 business. Who thinks they could do this in a year? I'm just curious. Let me see your hands. You could do it, frankly, without most of the strategies you're learning here. So what I want you to do is just take the numbers and make them closer to your business. Let's say you got a business that's a $2 million business, right? Take the same formula, and what happens? 
You go from a $2 million business to what size business in less than a year? Come on, guys, what? Well, you can make it 2.6 just by doing 10, 10, 10, or you can make it a $5 million business by doing 33, 25, and 50%. How many follow this? If you go, those numbers are boring to me, add a zero. Take your $20 million business and make it a what? If it was a $20 million business and we're going to use the same formula, it would be 50 million. You're going to jump proportionately. $100 million businesses, just add a zero. I started with the most simple zero because then it's believable to you. But the ratio doesn't change based on the size of the business. So here's what I want you to do. Turn the page and do your formula right now. By the way, who here feels certain you could find a way to increase new number of clients by 10%? Raise your hand. Let me see if you really believe that. Say aye. Aye. Anybody not think you could find a way to get 10% more clients if it was your total focus? Total focus. Okay? Second, anybody here who feels certain you could find a way to get 10% more money, that's it, per transaction by either added value, additional product, whatever it takes? Who here feels you could absolutely do that? Raise your hand. Say aye. Aye. Great. Who here can find a way to get 10% more purchasing time, more referrals? Raise your hand. Say aye. aye. Great. Then I want you to do this now. Flip the page. And right now, my time's ending, so you got to do your job. How many clients or customers do you currently have? You fill it up there. It was filled in in the blank up there. Go ahead and put it up there. How many clients do you currently have? What's the average value per sale? How often do they buy back from you? What's the size of your business? Now, if right now you're rolling your eyes, that means you don't know the answers to these questions. That means you really don't know how to run your business. The first thing you better know is how many clients you have. You've got to know what the average transaction is. And you certainly want to know how often they're buying from you. Otherwise, you really don't know anything about the fundamental matrix of your business. Here's the good news. If you don't know it, can you go find this out? Yes or no? Yes. Not hard to do. Do an estimate if you don't know. Do an estimate. Start out with what you have. The size of my business currently is X million, X whatever. Work backwards. How many new clients, how many total clients do we serve in a year? Some of you thought of them as customers. You can use that word if it helps you get back to what they were, because many of them were customers for you. How much on average do those people pay? How often do they buy? And then all I want you to do is fill that in and then below it, add 10%, 10%, 10% and calculate the number and you will know your plan. Or if you want to grow it to 150%, add 33, add the 25, add the 50. We're going to give you, since I'm done and I did it in less than 15 minutes, we'll give you five to come up with your formula. Go. How many have been able to complete this? Let me see your hands. How many have come up with this? Great. If you've got a question, two or three quick questions, I try to answer a few. The biggest question I'm hearing from several people, uh, Mark, are you over there? Where are you, Mark? Yeah, Mark, would you share your question so we give a perfect example? Give me a hand. It's Mark, ladies and gentlemen. No, I said it's Mark, ladies and gentlemen. Share with him your question because it's the nature of many people's questions. Tell them what business you're into, if you would. We're, we're a commercial general contractor, so we build uh, hotels, casinos, retail around the country, and uh, obviously the markets uh, change quite a bit. Our sales are off by about 50%, and uh, my question was, is how can I, how can I increase um, the average dollar per sale when no one's buying, um, yeah. and increase the customer base as well when Everybody is price driven and there's just not a whole lot of uh, that type of work going on these days. So. so two things I want you to notice. Ask and you shall what? Ask a lousy question, you get a lousy what? How come I can never lose weight? Because you're a pig. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask that question of your own mind, your brain's going to go, because you're a pig. I'm using the example of what happens in people's minds. How many know what I'm talking about here? Say I. If you say, how can I lose weight? Your brain will say, well, go on a diet, but that's painful, so I'm not doing it. But if you said, how can I lose weight, totally lose weight, and completely enjoy the process, and you kept asking that question, expecting an answer from a state of what? Uncertainty or certainty? Which one? Certainty. certainty. Your brain goes, you know, years ago I used to play racquetball or basketball one-on-one -on -one or something, and I wasn't really exercising. I was having what? And I was in the best shape of my life. 
If you ask a better quality question with an absolute expectation to keep asking it, you're going to get an answer. But notice the questions he asked me. They both had built-in presuppositions that they couldn't be fulfilled. How do I do this when it's impossible is basically what he said in both questions. How many follow this? So I didn't let that happen. I just said to him, I, I didn't say, oh, no, the market's going to change or, oh, no, people will pay more money. I didn't see either one of those things. Instead, I met his world. I came to him instead of saying, well, just as you heard with roofing contractors, you can absolutely change somebody who's price driven to something else with education marketing. When they start to seeing it's more risky to pay that price, but that's your job to come up with that core story. I didn't tell him that. That would have been one way to do it. I said to him instead, when you're trying to do this, you're presupposing that this is the only product you can offer. You're presupposing this is what we do. We do about six projects a year, he told me, of what, uh, five million each? Yeah, five million bucks each. So we have this $30 million business. We do these six million projects, or these six projects, five million bucks each. And, you know, the market's just not doing it right now. And I said, maybe it's time for you to invent a new product. Remember, what is business? Innovation and marketing. If you're not going to innovate, you're going to eat it. You can market all you want. Sometimes you have to innovate. And I said, what season do you think the industry's in right now? What season is it? Well, winter. I said, how long do you think winter's going to last? He said, about a year and a half. I said, I hope so. <laughs> how many think it could be more than a year and a half for the construction industry? Everybody in everybody else's industry except his seems to think that. The reason is because we don't want to face the level of change we need to make, even though it may be the best thing that ever happened to them. Let's assume that a year and a half from now, the industry explodes and new casinos are opening all over Vegas. Ah. Let's just assume that all came together perfectly. Then he'd be back in the business he was in. Maybe the greatest thing that ever happened his entire life was this thing collapsing. Because now he has to create something brand new with the same resources, people. He thinks, wow, there's a different need out there. There's a need right now. People are aging. I'm making this up. This is completely wrong. People are aging, and the only place they can go is these not even hospitals, these horrible places nobody here would want to put, who had any caring for their parent, would want to put their parent. And yet people at the same time can't keep, take care of them at home very often. What if we built facilities that were like residential facilities? Completely wrong idea. And we did them in partnership with the state that has funds for it. And oh my gosh, we could do something that actually took the millions of people that are getting older, the baby boomers, they're turning 65, one every 10 seconds. And wow, the value of that real estate's going to go up because, by the way, that real estate's a necessity. This real estate's an accessory. Now, it's very different. We might not do $5 million projects. Maybe we do, instead of six $5 million projects, we do $31 million projects. Maybe we do 35. Maybe we make $35 million. And oh, by the way, you know, you're not negotiating across the table with somebody like Steve Wynn. We might actually have a better margin. You know, instead of a casino. Hmm, I'm making this up. It's probably the stupidest idea on earth. The point is there's an idea that isn't stupid. How many follow what I'm talking about here? See, when I'm listening to you guys, my brain's racing. And my brain's racing going, get out of your box. Your box is, this is my business. No, that's not. Your business is resourcefulness. Your business is meeting needs. Your business is adding more value to people than anybody else dreamed of. Your business is your creativity. Your business is your people and resources and ideas. When you start falling in love with your product, you're screwed. Because eventually that product's going to be out of date no matter how good it is, no matter how many years or decades you've been doing it for. And I said, by the way, what if it's not turned around a year and a half from now? Wouldn't now be the time for you to be coming up with a new product or service? How many follow what I'm talking about here? Somebody asked me a similar question saying, you know, I'm in the business of insurance and a client's, I get the price is fixed by the insurance companies. And, you know, they don't really do the referrals. I said the same thing. You have this delusion that this is the only product you can sell. Maybe the way you do this formula is you keep that business fixed, but now you have the new business with this ratio of these new products or services you can offer the same clients. This is the creativity. This is what's going to change your life and business. By the way, in the beginning it's scary, or maybe it's exciting. Maybe there's a part of you that's been yearning for a long time to be growing again and feel alive because progress equals happiness. He starts making progress on this, even if he's not there yet, he and his organization have come to life. People are going to feel like, man, this is it. Maybe this really was a gift. The guy that worked for Lehman Brothers, or woman, 
who used to get up out of Connecticut or wherever they were and get on the train and spend three and a half hours going back and forth to work every day, and they got to be there by 6.37 or 8 in the morning, and they get home at 10 or 11 at night, and they don't know their kids, and they don't know their husband or wife, and their health is deteriorating, and they're making lots of money. Maybe the best thing that ever happened in their lifetime was for Lehman to go under. Because now they get to reinvent their life based on the new season and the new nature and what they really want and why they're doing it all in the first place. Is this making sense to you? Yes. These guys, these next four or five days, give yourself the gift to say, I'm going to work harder than I've ever worked on the business. Not in the damn thing. You guys work hard in your business all the time. We all know this distinction intellectually, but how often are you really doing it? That's why we'll go day and night. Listen, I can make this a hell of a lot easier on me and you, I can just pop in and out and do nothing. I want to make sure when you leave in these five days, you leave with a plan that you can look yourself in the eye else and go, if I screw up, it's going to be like this. That's the goal we have here. And so you don't have to do it all. But I do suggest this. The other way you chunk is when all that stuff's in your head, you still got it in short-term memory right now. But you won't by morning. Now you may have written it down, but you're going to then have to take time to go review all this stuff again. So here's what I do as a practice. When I want to master something, when I was learning neurolinguistic programming, I'd sit in a class and we'd go all day and their idea was like, you know, nine to noon and then noon to like three, <laughs> you know, and everybody's like, wow, that was a long day, right? <laughs> See, my view is if you're really building something and you got this and people go, well, I have no time to build a business. You know, I'm, I'm working, you know, nine to five. Well, what are you doing from seven to two? <laughs> That's the second shift. If your business isn't going, that's the shift you better take on. Because your family deserves it, you deserve it. If you did it for a short period of time, you'll have such a new momentum that you can have a job that's working three or four hours a day. But if you don't do what's necessary, when it gets winter, I gotta tell you something, you gotta work harder in winter. You gotta go out and chop the wood and bring it in. But you also can ski and snowboard and do all of those cool things. It's a different game. But here's what I do right now. You got so much you pulled in today. Here's what I did when I learned NLP. I'd sit down and I would just write out two lists. One list was every principle or distinction I could pull out of my head while it was still there. I made myself see everything you've ever seen, heard, tasted, touched, or smelled is in your nervous system. But it gets stored, but if you don't retrieve it in short, a short period of time, you don't get the ability to really retrieve it very well. It's not linked up. But if while it's in your memory, you quickly go grab it, you set up the retrieval system, you'll be able to get it again. So I'm going to ask you to do this every night, and we're going to do it right now for just five minutes. So what distinctions did you make today that could absolutely change your business forever. Well, you just learned one. I just learned the three, the formula, the three-step formula for growing my business by a third to 250% that I know is totally doable. So I'd write down the principle and I'd write down if there was an action item. Like some of you right now, when you go home, you shouldn't leave this whole binder. You should be able to go to the act, back of this binder and go, here's my action list. I'll decide when I'm going to do it later or I'm going to lock down when and I'm going to make sure I follow through and implement this. How many think this three-step plan would be invaluable for you to be focusing on ongoing? Raise your hand if you believe this would make a difference. Say I. Great. So I'd write down the principle and I'd write down an action item. And if you don't know the number, then I'd say, I'm going to get the number of clients. I'm going to call someone tomorrow. I'd write down an action item. I'm going to make sure I get the number of clients. I'm going to find out what our average is or I'm going to call my accountant and get them to do it for me. Or I'm going to meet with my team when we get home and we're going to establish this is the plan. You don't just take the information in and go, isn't that interesting? You come up with principles and action plans. What other distinction did you make today that was valuable? Any little one. You could go, you know, I made that distinction about, you know, education marketing. I knew the distinction before, but I'm not doing it. Here's what I heard different tonight. I heard this story. That triggers me. That story about the shoes, you know, really thinking about to the point that all these different things that will make somebody, the nerves in their feet, this, I need to look at that in my business. You write down the principle and you're like, okay, action item. I'm going to figure out what's the equivalent. What's going to be my core story? Or I'm going to hire Empire. Or I'm going to say, screw you, Empire. I'm going to go to your website and I'm going to go do it myself. But make it an action item. So principles, stories, action items. You got five minutes right as fast as you can. Make two columns. One of those is any principle, any story, any distinction that will trigger a memory in you. The other is the action item. Go for it now.